we are stepping up the level of our services. Our goal is to treat your loved ones with the respect they deserve. We are taking our services to new heights. We are stepping in a new direction. Step into the new millennium with Golden Gate Fund, where service begins and never ends. Hello and welcome to Ask the Undertaker, an open and honest look into funeral service brought to you by Golden Gate Funeral Home and Crematory, with facilities in Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Tallulah, Louisiana. I'm your host, John Beckwith Jr., and I'm joined today by the King of Pre-Need, Brother Eddie Pace. Hello there. We have the Queen of Pre-Need, Sister Deborah Abrams. Hello, everybody. We have our sister and chief financial officer, Sister Carolyn Haynes. Hello, everyone. We have the pastor, M.T. Body of the Glory of God Church and St. John Church of Hillsborough, Texas. Praise the Lord, everyone. We have the specialist, Miss Vivian Caldwell. Hello, everybody. And we have the pastor, A. Lewis Eaton of the Church of Living God Temple 280. Blessings on you. All right, today we're going to talk about family choice. Come from Joshua, the 24th chapter, and the 15th verse. Pastor, you tell me you read that for us. The word of God says, choose you this day whom ye will serve. All right. Pastor, what do you think the best way for families to have their choices? Well, the best way is to just make sure that they have prayed over it and asked the Lord to give them the right directions to go. That just makes sense, That's, doesn't it? Yes. What do you think? What do you think about that, Miss V? What's the best way to have them carried out? You need to put them in writing. Actually put it in, in writing. writing. That's right. So whatever your choice is, if it's to choose Golden Gate for your home, mm -hmm. if it's to choose to have a pre-need, a will, you saying those things need to be in writing. In writing. Pastor, by the way, what type of things does they put in writing? Well, they should put in writing what type of service they would like to have. Okay. Where they would like to have their service and, and what kind of casket they want. These things need to be put in, on paper in their own handwriting so that the family would know what this individual would want for their home going celebration. And Carolyn, what do we call that when you do that? <laughs> a pre-need. A pre-need. <laughs> so everything that Pastor Body just spoke about, uh, Vivian said put it in writing. Pastor Eton said pray about it. And he said write it all down. And that all go along with getting a pre-need. A pre-need. Give me some different types of pre-needs that our families can choose. Well, the first type of pre-need is an insured pre-need. Okay. Directly. And that allows the family to come in and be covered uh, if they're in good health from day one. From day one, they are covered. That's absolutely Meaning right. Meaning after two-year contestability is over, mm -hmm. that this policy will pay for itself. Family do not have to pay the balance. That's right. If they purchase a insured, insured pre-need. Pre What's another type of pre-need they it's uh, a graded pre-need. Okay. And that pre-need is for someone that's sick hmm. and unable to get uh, qualified for insured pre-need. So if you're unable to qualify insured, meaning that you're ill or whatever reason, you can get this graded pre-need. Now, pre who would fit into the graded, uh, Ms. Vivian? Anyone who is terminally ill okay. or in a nursing home or even in prison. I'm terminally ill, meaning the doctor has given right. me up six months or whatever the case may be. They yes. have given up on me yes. in this disease. No cure in sight. Right. And I can still have a graded, graded pre-need. Pre That's right. Uh -huh. That is amazing. It is amazing. But and you're saying if I'm in a nursing home, if I am in a hospital. In prison. Yes. Or even in prison, I can still have this type of pre-need. That's right. Or even on hospice care. That's Isn't right. That you can something? still get a, a graded pre-need. On hospice. Yes. Someone is watching right now say, I have a loved one on hospice. I thought it was impossible mm -hmm. to get a pre-need for them. We can still get them one. Now, Quinn, you talk about insured pre-needs. Mm -hmm. Is a mm -hmm. graded pre-need insured? It is insured, Mr. Beckwith. After two years and one day, should death occur, the balance will be paid and the family won't have to come out of pocket with any additional monies for that funeral services that they picked up. So let's help the public with this. Mm. If someone is on hospice, that doesn't mean they're going to pass away tomorrow. That's right. Some people live more than two years on yes. hospice. Mm -hmm. I know someone personally who's been on hospice for over two years and she's still alive. So if you're on hospice and you live at least two years, this insurance will, will pay for in itself and take care of this pre-need. That's right. So mm -hmm. even with a graded pre-need, it could be insured. That's right. Uh -huh. The third type of pre-need, uh, Pastor Eton. 
It's a free premium. Free. Yes, sir. No charge. No charge. <laughs> Come on, help me out, specialist. <laughs> what is a free pre need? What, what do we say to the public about a free pre need? A free pre need is for those people who don't want to purchase a pre need right now. Okay. It allows them to be able to put things in writing and allows your family from not having to come into the funeral home on the worst day of their life and try and guess and figure out what it is that you want. Pastor Body, why would somebody purchase a free pre need? Well, Brother John. It's their wishes and eliminate that emotional distress upon the family. Okay. Uh, when you have a free pre it uh, still allows you to write down what type of service you want, where you want it at, who's to do what on your service. Uh, it also allows you to make your casket selection as well. But at the same time, it eliminates the emotional stress off of your family. Carolyn, I use the word purchase and you use the word free. <laughs> you purchase it with what? How much does it cost to purchase this? Well, we start at where we can do a budget for you. Okay. We fit anyone's budget. So you can make that one-time payment that you would like on that free pre-need. And a lot of people will get the free pre-need in that they have monies elsewhere. So they don't want to start another account. So you can still have that money available. So you have one time. You can pay it out in three, five, eight. 10 years, and now you can even pay it all the way up to 20 years. So I can purchase a pre-need, or I can do a free pre-need and not pay one dime. At not pay time. any money. You right. can uh, maybe do it later. Yes. Or you can put that financial burden later on on somebody so else. And we, we, we don't recommend that. Right. So give me a reason why I should purchase a pre-need, an insured pre-need or a graded pre-need. Why should I do that? Well, I think that it would save the family um, the stress of coming out, as we mentioned earlier, having to figure out what you want, and then you freeze today's costs. Freeze today's costs. On cost. an insured product. So we got the emotional, we have the wishes, but more important, today's cost mm -hmm. is frozen. frozen. Mm -hmm. Financially, that just makes, makes sense. sense. Why freeze today's price? Why not pay for it 20 years from now? King? Because you're going to get it at today's cost. Okay. What you buy today, that's what you're going to get if it's 10, 20, 30 years from now, you will get that same pre-need. And, and funeral costs go up just like everything else. Mm. Pastor e Town, what if you could have frozen a loaf of bread or gas or mm -hmm. groceries? <laughs> 20 years ago. Yes, and use it for right now. It would be a blessing. Wouldn't that be a financial <laughs> blessing? Be a blessing. Mm -hmm. That would be a financial blessing. So we talk about three different types of pre-need. Name those again for me. We have a free pre-need. Okay, free. Don't have to pay any money. Don't have to pay anything, but okay. it allows you to put your wishes okay. in writing and eliminates your family from having to guess what you want. What's the other one? Uh, we have an insured pre-need. Insured pre-need, the queen talked about, and what's the other one? And a graded pre-need. So everybody should have, Carolyn, a pre-need. Pre -need. Pre -need. We keep talking about these three reasons why everybody should have pre-need. Pass the body. Give me one of those reasons. Well, financially. Financially. That's just a good reason. Carolyn, mm -hmm. what's another reason? Emotionally. Emotionally mm -hmm. is eliminated, not making decisions exactly. at the worst mm -hmm. moment Other of your lives. life. And what's the other reason, Queen? Your wishes are known and done. Your wishes, your choices. Mm -hmm. A lot your of people uh, may attend a funeral or see a funeral mm -hmm. and have an opinion about right. it. Right. Yes. But the bottom line, whose wishes is it? They're my wishes. <laughs> They're my wishes. So it doesn't matter about your opinion if they are my, my wishes. wishes. My yes. wishes. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, why should everybody have a will? John, you have to leave written instructions to people. You can talk about it. They're going to forget. You tell us all the time. You only really remember about 10% of what someone says to you. So it needs to be written and mm -hmm. cannot be disputed. That just makes sense, yes. doesn't it? And mm -hmm. that's what that will is for. is for. Now, who is it for, Queen? The will is left behind uh, for your family members to know what you want. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Help me out. Is, there, is it for poor people? Is it for, for poor people, for the middle class, your favorite word, okay. and for the rich. It's for, for everyone. For poor people like myself, the yeah. middle class at the presidential election has taught us, right. as well as rich folks. That's right. So it's not just for rich people. Right. It's for which, everyone. And, and pass by, that was a misconception for many years. People thought only rich folks mm -hmm. needed wheels. But that's <clears> not the case. That's not the case, Brother John. Everyone needs a will okay because it eliminates that chaos and confusion with your family and we love to say that we yeah. say <laughs> chaos and confusion should not go along with a with family. Family. Mm -hmm. no. what do you think about leaving an inheritance for a family how do you leave an inheritance for your family because we all want to be remembered a certain way 
You and I believe remember, uh, leaving an inheritance is the best way to be remembered. Yes. You can actually do it with life insurance. Okay. Because life insurance is actually for the living. Pre-need is actually for you. Isn't that something? Tell me about some life insurance that our listeners and watchers could purchase. Well, term life okay. is one of my favorites. Simply because you can get it for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it says, a term of time. Uh, for instance, if you have a small child, as we say all the time, and you want to make sure that they're taken care of in case you die before they get grown, you can make sure that you have a substantial amount at a lower price. Term insurance. What's another one, Carol? Whole life. Okay. I've gotten past the term life in my life. <laughs> so the whole life really works. And what it does, it allows you to build up cash value in that policy, as well as my premiums remain the same. Give me another insurance specialist. Graded life insurance. Graded. So yes. we talked about graded pre-need. Pre now there's also a graded life insurance policy. And tell me about that. It's for individuals who are sick mm -hmm. and would not qualify for a regular type of life insurance or a term or whole life policy. They are able to still get life insurance at a graded policy. So if I'm in prison or if I'm terminally ill, I can get a graded pre-need, pre -need, not but a if graded I'm, life but if insurance I'm policy. sick, I can mm -hmm. still get a graded insurance policy yes. and leave an inheritance right. for my family. Exactly. What should uh, insurance be used for, Pastor Biden? Well, it should be used for an inheritance for your family. It should be used for them to continue to live on at the status that they're living in every day. Okay. Uh, it should not be used for your funeral services. Don't use it to pay mm. for no. a funeral. No. If you used all your money on a funeral, what are you going to have left to pay your bills? To live on. Take care of your babies. <laughs> Nobody have nothing left. Carolyn, you know, this is interesting. A lot of families come in to make arrangements. They hand us a policy. The first thing we look at is the effective date. Yes. That two-year period of time. What, what, what does that call? That's the contestability period in a policy. Mm-hmm. And that just gives them the right to investigate your cause of death. Mm -hmm. And as a funeral home, we cannot take a contestable policy because we cannot take an assignment on that policy. So we talk about the word contestable. Less than two years old, it is contestable. contestable. We're not saying it's going to pay or not pay, right. but this other word. Assign. We can't take a assignment, assignment because it's not a guarantee of anything. Exactly. Investigation first. Then in a pay. decision, we can't take that chance. No, sir. Tell us what does signable mean. Signable means they will pay a third party, the funeral home, part of your money from that policy to pay for your funeral. And John, I still see it. I even saw it a couple of days ago. Family walks in and says, mother has had this policy with her job for years, but they will not pay the funeral home. If they would not accept an assignment? No. You can't use it towards your film. Pastor Body said you shouldn't be using it anyway. anyway. Come by a pre-need from the king <laughs> specialist or queen. You don't have to worry about that. Right. Amen. Who should be beneficiary? Queen. Someone over the age 18, Mr. Becker. Over the age of 18. No minors as beneficiaries. They can't enter into a contract. Okay, so if you got them on there, take them off take them and off. put somebody on there. Who's another person should be beneficiary? Someone you could trust. Trust. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Because uh, as my good friend over here, King, says, it's a blank check. It's a blank check. And they can spend it <laughs> anywhere. Anywhere they <laughs> want to. King, who else should, uh, should be beneficiary or should not? Uh, should be. Uh, can you be dead and be a beneficiary? No, no can you be should a, be definitely living. It <laughs> needs to be alive. <laughs> and and you know, we, you we, can trust. We kind of laugh about that. And I know Pastor says somebody you can trust. And the uh, queen, that's important. You got to be able to trust them. Mm -hmm. But so often we don't change beneficiaries mm -hmm. when someone passes away. Yes, and I have actually uh, did insurance review on policies where they had uh, their deceased uh, wife mother, or wife mother or dad. still on there. We, we see it all the mm. time. Yes. Carl, who should be making decisions for you? I should make my own decisions. I make okay. my decisions in life. I should make my decisions about my, my funeral as well. So, Queen, if your family comes in and you haven't made decisions... <laughs> They make the decisions for you. And, and your next kid. And whatever their choices are, that's what that's, that's what, that's what it's gonna be. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can't be upset as a outside family. You can't be upset as an outside friend or even just a person with an opinion. Yeah. Because that person did not leave instructions, instructions of what they wanted. That's so right. their next of kin passed the body, has the right to do <coughs> whatever, whatever they, they like to whatever do. Whatever they mm -hmm. choose. Carol, that beneficiary has the right to spend that money. Any way they want. Any way they want to. Yeah. And what we're saying, if you purchase that pre-need from the king, queen, specialist, you don't have to worry about that. 
That's right. That choice will be yours. yours. That's right. Mm -hmm. So why should I follow your choices, specialist? Number one, because it's honorable it's to follow honorable. your choices. That's okay. right. That just makes sense. It does. Mm -hmm. And you want to be honorable, especially in a time of, of death. death. That's mm -hmm. right. Oh, yeah. We challenge so often uh, pastor people say, listen, I don't care what they wrote down. I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. <laughs> and uh, especially just say that's not honorable. How important is, is it to be honorable? It's very important to uh, be honorable because one thing we have to recognize, God even honors people that honors one another. Mm. And our problem is we don't see this. We want to do it our way. So we have lost respect for the person that's really doing it. So who, whatever my choices is, you need to honor, honor my, my choices. choices. Yes, you shouldn't have an opinion about well, my, my choices because it's not honorable yes, to sir. do that. What's another reason, Pastor Body? Well, Brother John, another reason why things should be done the way it should, because oftentimes people mm -hmm. will form their opinion and it's not their choice. It, it's was not, my choice. it wasn't their choice. It's my choice. Do you think it's disrespectful, uh, Carolyn, not to follow someone else's uh, Most definitely. Choices? You have just told them it doesn't matter to me what you've written down, hmm. what you said. I'm going to do it my way. And that's very, very disrespectful. That's disrespectful. Yes, sir. Not honorable. It's my choice. And it is. Disrespectful. It's just disrespectful. Yes. Can you think of another reason why I should uh, honor your wishes, uh, King? It's the right thing to do. Just the right thing to do. Yeah, it's the right <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, it's right. Right, <laughs> right thing. Decent and in order. You have yes. to remain that way. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about you writing it down, but you also have to tell someone that you trust that will carry it out. You sitting around and you talk about what you want for your funeral and you've written it down. You have to make sure that person has a copy of what you've written down. Mm -hmm. Because if not, if they don't like it, like you said, they're going to tear it up. They're, no one's ever going to know what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And it also gives the family as well as yourself a peace of mind. That is so <laughs> important because mm -hmm. I have to live after exactly. this. Mm -hmm. After I have made this decision to go with your choice or without, mm -hmm. I have to live with that peace decision. of mind. How important is it to, how important is it to have a peace of mind? Very important. A lot of times mm -hmm. I meet with people and they are left wondering when there's nothing in writing. Mm -hmm. They're left wondering if they made the right decision. And so they are kind of battling with themselves. It's like, oh, gosh, I wonder if that's what they wanted. I wonder, you know, if I did the right thing. When you have it in writing, it gives both you a peace of mind to know that it's going to your wishes are going to be carried out. And it gives your family a peace of mind to know that they carried out your wishes. Carolyn, how much is a peace of mind worth? As the commercial says, Priceless. Priceless. <laughs> Can you buy a piece of my no, psychologist, yeah. psychiatrist, mm -hmm. make a living because we all searching for a piece, piece, of, mind. piece of mind. So, mm -hmm. Pastor Biden, let me ask the question. What is Golden Gate Fear Home built on? Golden Gate Fear Home is built on giving the best service ever. The very best, best service. service. Y'all, that is so mm -hmm. important. Yes. You have that that is our foundation. Yeah. Anything yeah. else is just building on top of. That's right. Mm -hmm. But if someone comes in and, and King, if they have a choice of the type of service, we got to give them the very best service. That's, That's right. right. If it's uh, traditional services, if it's out of the box service, whatever they choose, we have to give them the very, very, very best. best. And that's what our foundation. Carol, what's another thing that we're built up? Being the most affordable funeral home in the nation. Most affordable. Yes, sir. Now, that's interesting. A lot of people say, well, I've seen you on television. You have your own reality show. You're on Ask the Undertaker. And you're also the most affordable, meaning... More affordable than anybody else? Anyone in the world. When you come in, we will service you with your budget. Your, regardless what it is. Regardless. So if another funeral home give you a price, say, listen, I know they're too popular or whatever the case may be, we won't let them beat our price. No, sir. When you call and ask us a price, the very first thing we tell everyone, we will meet or beat any competitor's cost. And then we give them, we start with our least expensive service. So that's our foundation. That's our foundation. Mm. Very best service, very Affordable. best Affordable. price. Yes, sir. Mm. Will we honor any family requests? Yes, sir. <laughs> any of them? Any of them. Regardless of what it is. Regardless of what it is. Regardless how extreme it is, we will still uh -huh. honor We will still their honor request. their request. Isn't that something? Do you think that's the right thing to do, Queen? Uh, most definitely, Mr. Beckwith. As you stated earlier, that's how we built our foundation on pleasing the families and giving uh, them what they want and making it a family choice. 
Is that choice important, King? It's very important, and it's all about the families. It's not about us. It's about taking care of the families, making sure that the families are pleased. All right, the few news you can use. Uh -huh. King, we're going to start off with you. Well, mine has to do with escort service, mm -hmm. how dangerous their jobs is. I've seen an article on the Internet where the escort services, escort service is our their job is very dangerous. Where they they have to stop the red lights. Yeah, they they're, have to they're going lead us in through. and out of traffic. Mm -hmm. They're stopping at the corners, controlling the traffic. And a lot of times, I like to get this to the families. A lot of times, families do not have enough escorts. So you're saying that when you meet with your film director, you should need to purchase you more need escorts. To purchase more escorts because it's their job to get you and your family and your loved ones to the cemetery. Make, make it safe there. And we want to remind people, Golden yes. Gate Senior Home does not own an escort company. Yes. Uh, that, a good, <laughs> good, good choice. I mean, yes. it just makes sense to yeah. have as many. What yes. about you, Queen? Any funeral news you can use? My funeral news is that uh, the women in the death care industry mm -hmm. are becoming more and more uh, popular oh, I agree. as a career. Because when I first started mm -hmm. the business, women, I mean, we, we mm -hmm. had a secretary that was a woman, but we sure didn't <laughs> have one on a funeral as a film director. Or very seldom you but saw they're getting, that. They're getting more and more involved. More they're and even more driving popular. hearses and they're doing uh, a lot more things. Coming a long ways. I think mm -hmm. dad was a great industry. innovator of that when I was just a child. We, our, our, we, our film directing charge was a woman. In Wasahatchee, Texas, when we first opened, was a woman. And as well as in Dallas, I mean, it's over 30 years ago, our first film directing charge was a woman. Mm -hmm. So I, I thank God for people like dad that kind of mm -hmm. help women in the industry. Uh, Carolyn, I mean, I'm sorry, Pastor Body, if you news you can use. Well, Brother John, I ran across something that was quite interesting, how the TSA, uh, Transportation Security Administration, have teamed up with funeral homes throughout the nations mm -hmm. to help secure and safely transport cremated cremains uh, in an airport. Uh, they said if it's in a plastic or wooden container, then they would allow it to go through the x-ray machine. But if it's not in, in anything else, they would not allow it to go through. And because you have proper documentation for the funeral home, they're saying that is no longer sufficient enough. They have to check it to make sure there's nothing inside of it other than cremains. That's a good mm. funeral news you can use. So if I'm going to travel with my loved one and their cremains, it needs to be in something they can x-ray. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Plastic or wood. wood. Mm -hmm. And just showing me a death certificate or showing me something from the funeral home saying this is my loved one, they're being cremated. That's not good enough. That's not good they're enough. They're not taking a chance you're going to put something on this plane that's going to harm Everybody on this right. plane. Mm -hmm. That's only fair enough, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Any funeral news you can use? Yes, I do have funeral news to use. Um, I actually came across some information about green funerals or eco-friendly oh, okay. funerals. Yes. It's very interesting. It's new to me. I understand it's been going on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Very new to me. Um, a lot of people nowadays are trying to be eco-friendly. And now you can also do that in a funeral as and well. And that is a choice. <laughs> yes, it is. That we need to recognize is there. Absolutely. So to kind of help us, how, how do you do a uh, green funeral? What you do is you have to purchase a biodegradable either okay. casket or urn. Okay. That so way, whatever my loved one is placed in is biodegradable. Has to be biodegradable. Okay. And you have to make sure that the cemetery of choice does not require a concrete liner. Because concrete is not biodegradable. biodegradable. That's right. So it has to be something that's going to go back to earth to earth, ashes to ashes, that's right. dust to dust. That's right. And then it can't be plastic or can't something plastic that's going to be around metal. for a that's metal right. or something mm -hmm. of that sort. Yes. We have to respect that choice, that's don't right. we? Yes. I like that. <laughs> and if you're on news, you can use? Yes. Uh, the other day on the caller, it's talking about how our president, uh, Obama, had to sign a bill mm -hmm. to keep people from protesting military services. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. People would actually be that disrespectful mm -hmm. to go out and protest someone else's yes, funeral. Not their funeral, not, not their, their loved funeral. one. Somebody else. Yes, and the president of the United yes, States, States had Barack say. Obama, had to sign something in law to say you can't do it. You can't do it. People are that disrespectful, not respecting Respectful. families' choices and what they choose to do, that they yes. would actually protest. Protest. And they had to get a law against that. They had to get a law against that. I got to get some opinions about that. What do you think <laughs> about that, Queen? 
Well, I think that was very honorable for the president to do that, but I don't think it should have had to go to that point where the president had to get involved. It should always be the family choice. And, and who protests somebody? That's right. It's right. disrespectful. It's extremely disrespectful to the deceased as well as their family. Mm -hmm. And these people have served our That's country. right. Our country, yes. Pastor Biden, they had every right to have any type of funeral they want. Yes. How dare you protest that? <laughs> and it's sad that mm -hmm. people will go to that extreme to protest someone giving their loved one a home going celebration. And the sad part about it is they forgetting that they have a loved one that's going to pass away one day. And they and want us they to respect feel. their choices. Right. Right. If they want to be cremated, if they want to have a traditional funeral, they want that respect. Yeah. How right. would they feel if, if there's someone standing out there with a, with a sign talking about, we don't like your, your, your funeral. Your traditional funeral we don't or want whatever funeral. type of funeral yeah. it is. That'll be sad. That's just, Carolyn, this is really stepping over the line when we start criticizing Funeral. other people funerals mm -hmm. when we and, start criticizing that. And we talk about it all the time about that respect and the death of your loved one is a very, very sad time. It's a hard time for you. And then to be able to walk out or you walk out there and someone is out there protesting the fact that your loved one is having the type service mm. of their choice. And, and not, not only protest past the body, some people do things on Facebook, yeah. oh, on man. Twitters, yeah. on many different outlets mm -hmm. and they will say something negative about somebody else's choice. choice. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Some things just, they say that's just not right. No. That's <laughs> not right at all. <laughs> so I think in all that we do, we have to remember that everybody has a choice. choice. And whatever their choice is, we need to respect that and that's be right. honorable. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, it just make sense. sense. Just and the right, right thing. thing. To do. And, I, and I wouldn't want to be that person that would have to answer mm -hmm. to God. Right. Oh, why. <laughs> why you were uh, why I protested a funeral. Loved one. And yeah. Carol, this is very important for those who are watching it thinks, you know, all the funerals are what they saw on Best Funeral Ever. Right. How many of those funerals, what's the percentage of the type of funerals that we do in that magnitude? Only 1%, John. 1%. 99% is traditional, traditional funerals. Yes. That's mm -hmm. interesting. There's only 1% is the ones who actually makes the show <laughs> the best and funeral then, ever. give people their opinion about your choice. We had no comments or anything about traditional service. Isn't that something? 99% are traditional. traditional service. Continue to watch Ask the Undertaker every Saturday night right here on Channel 47.2 and every Sunday morning on Channel 21 at 5.30 a.m. And every Saturday morning, y'all know my favorite thing, the radio, radio, show. radio show from 10 to 11 o'clock a.m. on Heaven 97. You can actually call in and give us your right. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can watch us 24 hours a day on GoldenGateFuneralHome.com. And we have all the episodes of Ask Undertaker. Is that yes, right, sir. Carol? Yes, sir. You can watch every episode and learn and that's why we're really here is just to educate the public about funeral business. And now you say we can go out on what? Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Can y'all believe the queen is actually out there <laughs> on YouTube? Because you can YouTube anything and learn anything about everything. But now you can YouTube Golden Gate Funeral Home as well as Ask the Undertaker. That's right. All right. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. We are stepping up the level of our services. Our goal is to treat your loved ones with the respect they deserve. We are taking our services to new heights. We are stepping in a new direction. Step into the new millennium with Golden Gate. The service begins and never ends.